This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with replacing the sump seal on the LG dishwasher. And pretty easy to do, just takes a lot of steps. We're gonna remove the baskets from the dishwasher. Just pull those straight out. And we're going to remove this lower spray arm. There's just two Phillips head screws holding it in. They're kind of uh, in between the arm in that round part, a little bit hard to get to, but if you move the spray arm, you can access the two screws. And then once they're loose, you can just pull the arm straight up. We're gonna remove these screws that are holding on the filter assembly. There's a whole bunch of them, and they're all the same size, except for one little one, the one I just removed but all the other ones are the same. We're gonna unplug it or turn off the breaker so there's no chance of getting shocked. I'm gonna zip out the rest of those screws. Once we get them out, we're gonna to need to remove this part here, which is bringing the water to the upper spray arm. So we have to just push back on a couple clips here. And there's also a couple clips at the very top. And then we turn it to the left and we can pull it right out of the filter assembly. Get that out of the way. Pull off the filter assembly. So now we're going to use a turkey baster just to get out as much water as we can from the sump. And some of the uh, parts have been removed to get more water out, but you don't need to do that. You can just use the turkey baster to get out, to get out as much water as you can and remove these little screws that hold this into the cabinet. This one didn't need to have any screws removed. It was just kind of put in by friction. So I'm gonna pull the dishwasher out mm. and made it sure it's unplugged. I'm gonna make sure it's disconnected from the garbage disposer or from the air gap. I'm taking the drain tube off. That's just so I can pull the dishwasher out a little bit further. Just need to get it out a few inches away from the cabinet because I'm gonna lean it on its side putting a towel down in case any water comes out and I'm gonna pull it down just be careful a little bit heavy doesn't hurt your back ease it down and then we have access to the bottom and take a few pictures of all the connections how they fit onto the sump assembly because we're going to have to remove a lot of these connections so having a picture is good just as a reference a lot of it makes sense though. I almost don't need the picture, but it's just safe to have that. So I'm taking off the connectors on the heater assembly, the temperature sensor, and then the two spade connectors that bring power to the element. And I'll take the two spade connectors off of the drain pump. Got the ones off the heater. And I'm using my pliers to uh, loosen the hose clamp that's on the drain. So I'm going to squeeze that down, push that out of the way, and then I can take that hose off of the drain pump. There we go. And then I'll take the power off of the variable motor and then the position sensor off of the variable motor and another <clears throat> hose clamp we depress it and get this hose off there we go take off the connector for the motor just going to pinch it and pull back and this is for the turbidity sensor, so the dishwasher can tell if the water's clean or not. Just pull that off. Just checking all the connections now, making sure they're all gone. We have one more here at the bottom, and one more hose, so we're gonna loosen the hose clamp. Pull that hose off. There we go. We have these two connectors that are holding the sump arm to the to the frame to the tub and they come off with just one 
little Phillips head screw per connector. Kind of a tight angle, so I'm going to use my Phillips head screwdriver and a small ratchet. Makes it pretty easy. And I'll zip that off. <clears throat> Okay, there's one, that's the one at about the 10 o'clock position, and then there's one at about the 8 o'clock position. I'm going to zip that one off. And then we'll be able to push the whole sump assembly inside of the dishwasher. Notice on this sump, some of the parts have been removed because this is a video that's part of another disassembly. Don't worry about that though. You can still have the motor connected and all the other parts still on there. <clears throat> so we're just today we're just going to be replacing the seal, which is pretty easy. So we get that screw off, and now we can push the sump. In from the 8 o'clock position, we can push it in toward the tub, and then we'll get the machine back on its feet, and <clears throat> we can pull out the sump assembly, take off the old seal, and now I'm putting on the new seal, making sure that it's seated firmly onto the plastic, onto the sump. That's just, an, that's just a part from a different video. And then we're going to use a little liquid detergent. You can use dishwasher detergent or hand soap. And you're going to coat the outside perimeter of the new seal. That's just a good trick that makes um, rubber seals go into their position a lot easier. You can do it without the lubricant, but it <clears throat> is much more difficult. So I think it's a good idea. And once it's lubricated, we'll be able to get the dishwasher back on its feet, open the door, and we're going to feed this new assembly in with the new seal. When you put it in, it's important that the part of the sump that's furthest away from you, that's at the 12 o'clock position, is pushed into the tub opening first, because there's a little plastic clip that has to click in, and then you push the rest of it down in. So just take your time here, make sure you get the orientation right, try to match it to the video. You'll notice that the drain pump is to your right, at about 45 degrees. So we're putting that in and then we're going to push in the whole sump assembly at the 12 o'clock position first. Push it in securely. There we go. Make sure everything's straight. You notice the heating element is at a is uh, on the horizontal plane it's facing you and we're going to push down on the seal. Make sure it's totally flat. If it's raised at all, it'll leak, so push it down to where it's totally flat. We'll put the dishwasher on its side again, and then we're just going to connect everything back. And then you're done. And that should get rid of the leak. So there's that little plastic tab I mentioned. And we're going to put those plastic connectors back at the... 10 o'clock and 8 o'clock position to, to hold the sump assembly onto the frame. So there's three points of contact with the tub or frame, these two plastic pieces, and then there's a, at your 3 o'clock position, there's that plastic tab that you made sure was secure. So screw those down tight.
I put the heater sensor back on and then the two spade connectors for the power for the heater back on. Make sure these are all secure and <clears throat> fully on because you don't want to have to remove the dishwasher again. Just get it done the right the first time. Huh? Put the position sensor back on and then the power for the variable motor back on, nice and secure. Two spade connectors for the drain pump. Drain hose. Put on this little one first. And then, then we get the hose clamp securely on there. exit hose for the drain so we're just checking everything double check all the points of contact are tight Got our little tiny sensor put back on the turbidity sensor. This little hose here at the bottom, at the six o'clock position, we're gonna push that back on. Put the hose clamp on. One more check. Everything is back on, looking secure. So now we're just putting the sump filter assembly back in and getting all the screws in tight. Got the lower spray arm back on. Got the upper spray arm clicked into position. Got the baskets back in. We're just putting the drain connector back on and we're gonna tighten that up and turn the put the power back on and turn the water on and then we can just test it make sure that there's no leak so we just turn on the power and get to pick a cycle and then it'll just start by itself i'm going to remove the lower kick panel just a couple Phillips head screws, get that off, get the soundproofing material out of the way. I'm just gonna stare in there during the fill cycle, during the circulation cycle, and then I'll make it go to the drain cycle early and just make sure during all those three cycles that there's no leak. If you still notice <clears throat> a leak, it's possible that the sump assembly didn't get pushed down. It could also be this little seal, which is for the circulation pump. They tend to wear out, and that would just be a slow drip if that seal failed. Here's uh, the sump assembly back in position. So thanks so much for watching, and please subscribe.